everyone so unfortunately i've been ill for most this month but i have almost finished two videos the first being the next part of my workstation and pc build and another being on a budget ray tracing build but instead of finishing one of those videos today i've been interrupted by my gaming pc orchid which is not doing okay at all so this started when i noticed that it was running louder than usual so I looked into the temps and the CPU was running at 97 degrees Celsius. So I turned it off and started looking at it up close and noticed something very strange and quite alarming. And rather than just investigating this behind the scenes, I thought I'd try to make like a little vloggy video on it. So I brought the PC out of my room and into the garage and when I put it down on the desk, the CPU cooler fell off. So we're off to a great start. <laughs> So let's bring the camera in and take a closer look. So the first thing that caught my attention was actually the fans. They seem to be covered with some kind of oil. This could just be some sort of lubricant that Cooler Master have used on the fan, or it could be something more serious. But it didn't look great with the RGB lights on. The next thing that I noticed was that all of the bottom screws on the pump block have some kind of strange crusty residue on them. There's also a mark on the GPU that's definitely quite scary. But it looks dry, like it's been there for a long time. But this GPU, which isn't the GPU that's meant to be in this PC, has only been here for around a week. So it can't have been there for that long. As you can see, the block isn't properly attached anymore. And it seems like the bottom plastic clip on the stock AMD mount has snapped. Being completely honest, this could have been from when I placed the system on the desk because I did put it down with a bit of a fud, but given that I was having temperature issues, I wouldn't be surprised if the clip gave way a while ago. So I've removed the GPU first, because I don't want anything else dripping on it. Um, also, you know, I just pretend that you didn't notice that this is an RTX 2080 Ti, because me having a second one isn't supposed to have happened yet in my build log series, so this isn't canon yet, just like ignore it, but... I'm really hoping this won't have left like a stain on the back plate or anything. And I swear it wasn't green when I first noticed it. So maybe it's reacting with the air or something, but it's just, uh, oh, okay. It's coming off. It's coming off. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so green there. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it hasn't left a stain or anything, so that's good. Okay, so it's time to take a look under the cooler. So let's uh, unseal the top screw. Okay, are you ready? Oh, what is that? Oh my god, that's so gross. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna have to take this cooler out properly. Okay, so I have no idea if this is biological or just oxidization, a mixture of metals, but what I do know is that only a flamethrower can save us now. I really wish I could get inside it and have a look around, like, I don't have the tools to get past these little triangle screws. Also, the fans are just very, very oily for some reason, like, what's up with that? This thing is definitely beyond repair, or at the very least beyond me ever trusting it in my PC again. So I've used so many all-in-one coolers since getting into computers, and I don't think I've ever actually had one that's lasted me more than a couple of years. I've honestly started to see them as like short-term products, and I know that some of you out there have probably had your all-in-ones for like five plus years, but my experience hasn't been as good. Normally it's only minor problems though, like them getting louder or the lighting failing, this is the first time I've ever had a major problem like this. So after replacing the broken mount, I installed the AMD Wraith Prism Cooler that came with my 3900X as a temporary measure. All-in-ones definitely have their benefits and I'll continue to use them in the future. They're convenient and clean and they can give you great temps. But if I was spending my own money, nine times out of 10, I'd go in the direction of either air cooling or fully custom water cooling. Air cooling gives you unmatched reliability, which is why my workstation is air cooled. And custom water cooling gives you superior cooling, low noise levels, customization, and most importantly, user serviceability. And I just really, really want to water cool this build. 
it's been six years now since I last water cooled and I can't wait to get back into it again and hopefully I'll be able to make that happen soon. But anyway, I guess this is orchid for the time being now then. So I hope you found this quick little video interesting and that the quality wasn't too bad. Normally videos take me about a week to make and with this one I limited myself to one day. But if you still liked it, then maybe I'll be able to make more of these in the future and get my upload count up. So if you liked it, please do hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so much to my patrons who make everything possible. And thank you for watching.